Hello, this is Watch It All About with another watch review. This time we're looking at the Alpha uh, Daytona, uh, the Paul Newman uh, model. Uh, so it's uh, an obviously uh, an homage to the Rolex uh, version. Uh, except for the, the price difference, this uh, costs a mere £120. Uh, whereas if you were to get a real Rolex Daytona, it would probably set you back about £10,000, obviously. Um, now the uh, debate about... Uh, whether homages are good or bad uh, is an ongoing one, so we'll leave that for another. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that discussion for another day. So we'll just look at the watch uh, in this uh, review. Uh, so one of the key things to uh, to note about this watch is the fact that it is a uh, mechanical chronograph, which uh, is quite unusual to find at a, a price uh, like this. Uh, so uh, that's obviously something to always keep in mind as we're looking through it, because there are a few uh, small uh, issues with it which uh, personally I, uh, I don't, they don't really bother me for the, for the price that the watch is. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's start by uh, looking at the case then. So the, uh, the case is brushed on the top and polished uh, down the sides. Uh, whilst the, the brushed finishing is uh, uh, not the best, uh, it's, it's quite light and not particularly uniform, uh, the two uh, sides which are polished are actually surprisingly well, uh, well done. I also quite like the the shape of the uh, shape of the case as well. You see the sides; it's got a slight bulge to it, and it meets the uh, uh, meets the bezel uh, quite nicely as well. And it has a nice sweeping uh, shape on the side profile. Obviously, this is all thanks to Rolex's uh, excellent design. <laughs> uh, but we'll just be looking at you know how uh, how well the the watch uh, fares uh, in build quality. So um, the polished uh, finish is all quite surprisingly good actually uh, across the whole entire watch. Uh, sitting on top of the uh, the case, we have uh, a bezel uh, with a tachometer. Uh, the only thing that bothers me is that the six on sixty didn't quite get painted fully, which is annoying. But apart from that, it's all actually really uh, really good. Uh, all these uh, markings are engraved into the bezel and then filled with paint. Uh, it's all pretty accurate. Um, and uh, uh, nice and uh, considering the, the numbers are very fine it's all been done uh, surprisingly well so that's uh, nice to see I like the uh, uh, the polished finish uh, of the bezel as well because it really does uh, reflect the, the light nicely uh, when you when you catch it just right uh, we have a, an acrylic crystal on top now this is one of the main things that uh, I was worried about because I'd never really uh, had much experience with uh, with an acrylic crystal before uh, as you can see, it does uh, distort quite a lot at uh, steep angles, um, but it also is reasonably high. Uh, you can see there, you can see it lift, uh, goes up above the uh, uh, bezel by uh, a mil or two. Uh, it does also scratch uh, quite easily, uh, tiny hairline scratches. I mean, you can't really see it in everyday life, but when you look at it up close, might be able to see some later on when I get the macro lens on. Uh, and that is, it is quite easy to do that. I mean, within a, a day or two of just general wear, I did uh, notice that it started gaining a few tiny scratches. But you can just get a tube of PolyWatch, uh, which is special, uh, a special polish for acrylic crystal, which will just polish it straight out. So that's not really uh, an issue. And uh, I wouldn't say that the acrylic crystal is necessarily uh, a negative uh, in this regard either, because um, uh, many new watches do use acrylic crystal to uh, give a, a watch a vintage vibe. Uh, you think of the Smith's Everest, uh, that's uh, got it, and that's a watch costing a few hundred pounds. Um, and obviously all, all vintage watches do have that anyway. Uh, so uh, the uh, pushers and the crown. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the crown first. Uh, one popular um, opinion is that the crown's thread is pretty poor and I would agree with that it's it's very uh, hard to thread properly uh, and it doesn't screw in very well at all uh, which is a shame uh, so if I try and push it back in uh, it's hard to try and catch the thread and then when you do catch it it feels a little bit uh, grindy and not very not very nice to wind it up um, so I mean, it, it can, it does make you 
feel a little bit worried, like, oh, one of these days I'm going to properly uh, knacker up the thread and then uh, won't, be able to, won't be able to screw it in anymore. Um, it is annoying that they, they did this on a, a watch that uh, needs to be wound every two days because obviously it is just a, the hand wind movement. Uh, so that's a, that's a shame. But I haven't, I've just been careful and I haven't found uh, it to be too, too much of an issue so far uh, in, in that regard. Uh, the crown has got the little A logo very lightly embossed on the end there. Um, nothing, it's not particularly uh, impressive or exciting, but at least it's there. Uh, the uh, pushers, on the other hand, they, these are really nice in comparison to the, uh, to the crown. Uh, so they're locked, so I can't actually use them whilst they're in this position. So what I have to do is you have to unscrew the surround like that. And then once it's fully unscrewed, you can see there, you can then push it in and away goes the uh, chronograph, which is, which is pretty nice. So if I unscrew this one as well. Now the thread on these uh, is perfect. It's very, very nice. It has a nice action, very smooth. Uh, so that's, uh, that's nice and quite impressive as well because it is, you don't see these very often. Uh, so they've done a really good job on that. So if I was to stop it there and then I can press that on to reset it very quick. Uh, reset. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll keep that going for a little while. So just screw that back in. You can leave them. You can leave them open like that uh, if you wanted to, uh, to be able to obviously use it quickly and not have to to unscrew them. Because when you're wearing it, it you can't you can't really unscrew them particularly easily. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the case. Um, let's uh, move on to the uh, the bracelet. Now the bracelet is uh, one of the one of the, the worst points about this watch. Um, although every main link is actually uh, reasonably well made, uh, it's let down by the bracelet uh, and also the end links as well. Uh, the end links are uh, hollow; they're not solid, uh, and they're also not being machined very well to fit the case. You can see that gap there, uh, a big gap uh, right there. Uh, and then if we have a look on, on the underside, you can see they are hollow. You can see a gap, in fact, uh, right there. So, uh, so that shows how uh, inaccurate it is. Uh, so the, the actual links themselves are all very nicely machined, uh, brushed, on, brushed on the top and the bottom, and then polished down the sides. Uh, and the polished is, again, like the, like the case, actually really surprisingly good. Uh, and the, uh, the brushed finish is also also fairly reasonable. Uh, so uh, uh, here comes the bracelet with a very uh, naff looking A printed, uh, stamped in the thin folded steel. You see it on the underside there. Uh, so that's not too impressive. Uh, it is good that it has uh, uh, six, uh, six uh, uh, points uh, to get a uh, uh, to get it fitting just right to your wrist, so that's quite nice. Uh, you can you can get it within you know a couple of mil to your ideal size. Uh, the actual elbow uh, part of the uh, deployment clasp is very thin as well. Uh, has alpha very lightly etched, laser etched there. Uh, so again, it doesn't really scream uh, quality, uh, and it's uh, only a single locking as well. So if you just push it in like that, and then you just pop it off like that. Uh, so it hasn't really, it's not particularly secure. I have had it pop open on me uh, once before, but that could be of, because I've got it reasonably tight. But even so, you don't necessarily, necessarily want uh, that to happen, do you? So uh, personally, I think it looks nice, uh, but f as far as uh, quality is concerned, it's, it's not the best. So uh, I still think this watch would look great on a leather strap. So if, if it does bother you, then... Obviously, a leather strap uh, will will look uh, just as good. Good thing about this watch is that it has got drilled through lugs. You can see here and here, so it's very very simple and easy just to uh, pop a paper clip or a, a pin removal tool through there, and it will release the lugs. So it's really straightforward and easy to to change the straps. So that's good. Uh, so moving on to the dial, uh, the dial is actually really surprisingly uh, uh, well finished uh, for the price. Uh, as you can see, we have a very slight concentric circle pattern on all the uh, subdials. That's nice to see, and I wasn't quite expecting that, so that's good. 
Uh, we have a nice cream, uh, cream main part of the dial, which gives it a nice vintage vibe, and it's not it's a bit softer than a, a pure white dial, so that's nice. Uh, and then we have this uh, black outer rim uh, with a, a minute track, uh, second track inside with uh, red markings. So the red splash here and also the chronograph gives it a nice sporty feel. Uh, the hands themselves are all polished, you can see there, they reflect the light well. And they're all actually really well made as well. Um, the loom on them is absolutely rubbish. Uh, there's loom on the hour and minute hand. And also, as you can see just about there's some tiny loom dots uh, on every hour as well uh, they might as well not put them on because they're that poor um, so don't expect to be able to see this watch in the dark basically uh, at every hour we also have uh, applied hour markers which again is a, a nice little extra level of detail uh, all of them are perfectly made and applied actually which uh, again I was really surprised to see so that's good and then we have the alpha uh, logo again uh, applied A with the printing underneath it. So the printing in general is is fairly good apart from uh, it can be a little bit blurry and not not very precise on the sub dials but that's most probably because they're printing on top of the uh, concentric circular pattern. Uh, but again I, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, with what they've done with the dial they've done a really nice uh, really nice job with that. So we have the run second running seconds hand uh, on the left on the right is our elapsed time for the chronograph. We can see we've gone five minutes there. Then at the bottom here, we have 24 hour uh, uh, indicator for the time as well. This big second hand here uh, isn't the, the running second hand, that's the chronograph second hand. Um, so there we go. So if I, if I now stop it, we'll notice that the big second hand has stopped and then I will reset it and we'll see, we'll see the second hand and the, the chronograph minute hand reset very quickly. There we go, in a blink of an eye. Uh, so the, uh, the movement is a Siegel ST1903, uh, also known as an SG2903. Uh, it has uh, around about 40 uh, hours power reserve on a full wind, uh, 23 joules inside. Let's uh, have a look if I just wipe the case back. Um, there we go. Uh, 23 joules. It runs at 21.6 thousand beats per hour, so it ticks at six sec uh, six ticks a second. Uh, and it actually has some quite nice um, uh, Geneva stripes and purlage, uh, and some uh, blued uh, blued screws in there as well. So it does look uh, uh, reasonably nice. If I can get a little bit closer, I'll obviously put the uh, macro lens on. We'll have a closer look at it in a in a in a moment. Uh, but it's a really secure, um, hard working movement, uh, known to be a workhorse. Uh, so it's very unlikely that you're going to get any issues from it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's well made and it feels good in the hand as well when you're using it uh, and when you're changing the time as well and winding it up, it feels really reassuring. Uh, so that's good. Uh, okay, so. Uh, just uh, before we put the macro lens on, I forgot to mention the, uh, the, the size specifics. Uh, so the size is 39mm uh, in diameter with a lug-to-lug -lug length of 48mm and a height of 16mm. Uh, so I think the 39mm diameter is, is a perfect size. I've got a 75 inch for your reference. Um, 75 inch, yeah, wrist. Uh, I think it's a perfect size really for, for a watch like this, for a smart, uh, casual watch. Fits very comfortably on the wrist. It weighs in at 120 grams. Uh, so uh, again, it's, it's not particularly uh, light, but not too heavy either. Uh, that's probably mainly due to the um, uh, lightweight bracelet and the, uh, the acrylic crystal. Okay, so let's get the uh, macro lens on and we'll have a look at it in closer detail. So we'll start with the with the dial. Here we can see the concentric circular pattern on the subdials. Let me just wipe the crystal. If we look at the hands as well, 
give you the nice uh, oh, uh, point there. There's the Alpha logo below it. Again, very uh, impressively made for the price. You can actually see some of the tiny hairline, fra uh, hairline scratches on the uh, acrylic crystal as well. And here's the hour markers as well, and the uh, the red uh, print uh, on the uh, minute track. There we go. And let's just have a look at the uh, the bezel. See some of the printing and engraving here again, quite uh, impressively uh, done. And if we look at the 60, you see there that's missing the uh, the slight bit of ink, which is a shame. But apart from that, the bezel is uh, is quite impressive. So let's uh, move on to the side here. We have the one of the pushers. Just wind it up if you can see that. Again, very uh, impressively made. Uh, and then the crown, which is not so good. If I just unscrew that. Oh. There's the thread. You can see it's a little bit mangled there, which is obviously why it's, it's not the best at screwing in. And there's the alpha logo just embossed on the edge, on the end. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's look at the uh, bracelet now. We'll see this big gap at the front of the end link. See the, the brushed finish. Uh, but then the, uh, the, the links themselves are all very nicely made. See the brush top and then the polished edges. There's the Alpha logo stamped on the end of the brace uh, on the the clasp. Uh, okay, so let's just have a look at the movement now. If I can get a decent shot of it, there we go. So there's the uh, Geneva stripes, one of the blued screws, and the the jewels as well. Oh, looks nice, doesn't it? So a very, uh, very nice movement to behold. Looks all, looks all good and well made. Okay. So there we go. So personally, uh, I really love it. I love the design. I think it looks great. Uh, it's, you can't really get any other mechanical chronographs uh, apart from uh, from Alpha for the same price for 120 pounds. I think it's really uh, really impressive. Uh, so uh, I highly recommend it. So if you can look past the the small faults uh, such as the crown and the um, uh, acrylic crystal and also the bracelet, uh, you've got a watch here that really looks uh, lovely on. You, know, you can wear it, you know, with jeans or with a suit, and it, it fits all the occasions. So. I really enjoy wearing it and I think it looks great. Okay, so that's uh, the uh, Alpha Paul Newman Daytona and that's what it's all about.